looking when the days were long he kept looking when the nights were dark he kept looking and one day I was found He turned my life around I accepted real love And gained a home above Oh, I will have no fear Because He's always near While further in sin I was pushing I'm so thankful he kept looking And one day I was found He turned my life around I accepted real love And gained a home above Oh, I will have no fear Because he's always near While further in sin I was pushing I'm so thankful he kept looking Yes, I'm so thankful he kept looking Father, we can lift praises to your name uh, tonight. Father, we ask your blessings upon those in our community who are uh, battling illness, Father, who are uh, grieving the loss of loved ones, Father, and are dealing with the aftermath of that. Father, we just ask your special touch upon them tonight. Let them feel your presence, your strength, your encouragement with them. Father, as we look into your word tonight, help us learn from it and what you want us to, Father, to put it into practice, Father, and so we'll live out our faith, we'll show others, we'll be able to lead them to you. Father, help us be that witness by the way we live. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Tonight we're going to look at James chapter 3. And we're going to pick up with verse 13 tonight. And I think this passage speaks so much to what's going on in the world right now. Because it's talking about how we put our faith into practice through wisdom. Now, the book of James has been interesting. It's, it talks about how, to, uh, how God helps us through our trials and our tribulations talks about how we are supposed to not just hear the word, but we're supposed to go out and do what we hear. We're not supposed to, you know, just talk about it on Sundays, but we're supposed to live it during the week. It talks about in chapter 2 how we're supposed to not show favoritism to others or judge others based on how much money they have or how uh, well-known they are or, you know, the riches they have, but just by uh, we're supposed to treat everyone with impartiality. It talks about faith without works is dead. We can, you know, if we say we have faith, we, we better act like it. It's not a true faith if we don't carry that in actions. The first part of James chapter 3 talked about taming the tongue and how we can say we've got everything mastered, but if we can't control what we say, that we are not perfect. We have not got it figured out and how hard that is to do. Tonight we're talking about wisdom and how, you know, if we really want to... Uh, show our faith. We act it by living wisely. And tonight's the last part of this chapter is going to explain what that is and how wisdom is acted out. Reading beginning in verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? By his good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder in every vile practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace.
peace. Go back to verse 13. It says, who is wise and understanding among you? It's a question. I'll tell you what, I, I, one thing we need right now is more wisdom. The world has just gone crazy, hasn't it? It's just things that a few years ago we have set up is now down. The things we set down is now up. It's just crazy. We need some wise people to step up. And, some, and that starts with us, believers. It starts with every one of us to show wisdom from above. It says here the opposite of that wisdom. See if this sounds familiar. The opposite of wisdom. It says you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts. And we're commanded, don't, don't boast about such things. If we are, um, and people get caught up in this, we can brag about how we do things wrong. You know, sometimes, like, yeah, that's what I told you. We brag about our sin. I really told them what I thought. That's not something we should be bragging about. I know I'm talking to myself on this too, uh, that we shouldn't be bragging about things that are they're not godly. He says, but the, the wisdom that doesn't come from God, but is earthly wisdom, as it says, he says, is unspiritual. It even says it's demonic. It says, for where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder in every vile practice. Turn on the news tonight, and you will not take long to find where there is disorder and vile practices going on in the world, right? We need to listen to the scripture tonight more than ever before. Where it says where we, where you see disorder and vile practices, vile things going on, it's, that's where jealousy and selfish ambition exist. The root of all those sins is selfishness. The reason there's discord and strife right now is selfishness of people it doesn't matter what happens to them it's all about me it's all about me i don't care what happens to anybody else that's the root of all sin isn't it my way is the best way it's all about me i know better than than god can tell me that is earthly practice not godly wisdom well then what is wisdom how, how do we define wisdom james is going to get into it in just a second but in psalm uh, 111 Psalm 111, verse 10, it teaches us where the beginning of wisdom is. If we need to have wisdom, let's find out how to get it. Okay, how do we get wisdom? We say we need more of it. How do I get wise? It says, verse 10, Psalm chapter 111, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. So how do we become a wise person? The very first thing is you have a fear of the Lord. Well, that fear may be a little bit different than the definition most of us think about when we hear the word fear. This fear means an, an awesome respect for, a healthy respect for the Lord, knowing, believing in, in the Lord. But it's more than that. How do you believe in the Lord? How do you know the Lord? Well, you know the Lord through his son, Jesus Christ. John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father through me. That was, an answer, that was Jesus' words there in answer to a question from Thomas who said, Lord, we do not, where you're going, how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one knows the Father except through me. That, the, beginning of the beginning of wisdom is fear of the Lord. You have to know the Lord, have a healthy respect and awe of the Lord. You know the Lord, you have that fear of the Lord by trusting in his son, Jesus Christ first place for wisdom if you if you do not know the lord you cannot have true wisdom from above and i pray it tonight if you do not know him that you will trust him i believe in his son jesus who came to this earth lived a sinless life died on the cross as a sacrifice for our sins so we can be forgiven jesus rose from the dead on that third day and, and he rose to show that god has victory over sin over death and he rose that we can have that eternal life as well if we know and trust him. Believe, believe that about Christ and give your life to him and follow him. Turn from the way you're going and follow him. That's how you know the Lord. That's how you truly fear the Lord. That is how you become wise. Well, let's go on. Verse 17. But the wisdom from above, in other words, this godly wisdom that we need to have if we're going to demonstrate our faith, if we're going to live it out, if we're going to model the faith that we say we have. So this wisdom from above is first pure. Well, that's the word sometimes that's intimidating to us. Why? If you're a believer and you say, well, I'm not clean and pure, well, we know that none of us are on our own, are we? There's not one of us who's pure enough, clean enough, holy enough, good enough 
to be saved, to go to heaven, to live with God forever and ever. We're sinners. None of us are that pure on our own. But through the blood of Jesus Christ, we can be forgiven. That sin can be washed away. We can be made white as can be purified, clean, pure. But that's still an intimidating word. And go, well, I'm not a pure person. What's, really, let's think about what that word means. How do we become pure? If true wisdom from God is first pure, what does that mean? It means very simply this. It means we do what God tells us to do. How can I be a pure, clean, holy? How can I live a holy life? You do what God tells you to do. God doesn't just say, okay, you follow me, guess. No, he gives us his word to teach us what we're supposed to do. Jesus modeled what we're supposed to do during his time here on earth. We're supposed to do what he says. He doesn't give us bad advice. He doesn't give us false instructions. If we want to live a pure life, we do what he says. Uh, in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 15, Give me verse 22. 1 Samuel 15:22 says this. So when Samuel was talking to Saul after the Lord said that Saul's going to be rejected as king, we go back up to verse 20. This is Saul talking. He said, And Saul said to Samuel, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. I've gone on the mission on which the Lord sent me. I've brought Agak, the king of Amalek, and I've devoted the Amalekites to destruction. But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the best of the things devoted to destruction, to sacrifice to the Lord your God in Gilgal. He's trying to come up with excuses. And he's saying, but the things they kept that they weren't supposed to, they're actually giving them to sacrifice to God. And Samuel said this, Has the Lord great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to listen than the fat of rams. Samuel here talking to Saul and saying, Saul, what really honors the Lord is if we do what he says. If we truly want to worship the Lord wherever we are tonight, right here in this church, watching back home, where, wherever you hear this, wherever, you're, wherever you are, how can you worship the Lord? You do it by being obedient and doing what he says. That's the first way we can worship. So see, living a pure life, is we, how, how do we do that? How do we become clean? How, do we, how are we holy? How are we set apart? We do what he says. If we believe in his son, Jesus Christ, we were made pure, made clean, and then we can go live that pure life by doing what he says. And he doesn't make us do that on his own, on our own, excuse me. We don't have to do that on our own, but he helps us through his Holy Spirit. What's the second thing James 3, 17 says? Is first there was pure. He says, but the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable. What does that mean? It means we're... We are to enjoy peace. We are to make peace. Remember in the Beatitudes, Matthew 5, 9, Jesus said this. He said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. In other words, when we go help make peace, instead of stirring up strife and dissension and causing all sorts of drama like that, when we help make peace, when we spread that peace through Jesus Christ, God says, that's my child. That's my boy. <laughs> he loves peace. It's, we're not supposed to be about dissension and trouble and drama all the time. We're to be at peace through his son, Jesus Christ. What next? It says, wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, then gentle. Some translations may say considerate there. And you'll see this theme all through this, these verses and all through Scripture. It's about meekness. And the, even the next term is going to be about that same theme. It's about um, being able to put others first instead of ourselves. Again, the root of all the craziness going on in the world right now is selfishness or evil, evil thoughts putting oneself first. Here, wisdom from above, it says, is gentle. What does that mean? It means... Willing to be led, willing to put others first. That's explained pretty familiar terms in Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. It says, so whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. We call that the golden rule, don't we? How are we gentle? How are we um, respectful of others or considerate, as your translation may say? 
It means we put others first. We treat others like we want to be treated. If we all did that, we'd all be taken care of, wouldn't we? If everybody treated everyone else like we want to be treated, we'd, be, we'd all be taken care of. So that's how true wisdom from above carries itself. It is pure, peaceful, gentle, or considerate. Next word is open to reason. Another way of saying that here is, is submissive, meek. It means willing to be led. Again, it's kind of hitting on that same thought. Jesus wants us very simply to follow him. When he called his first disciples, he gave that two-word invitation. I've said a bunch of times, I said it was the most simple yet complicated thing to do, right? It was simple in the fact that he makes it very plain. What are we supposed to do to be a believer in Christ? We follow him. I say it's complicated because we make it that way. We, uh, we come up with all these other things that we'd rather do, and we let get in the way of us following the Lord. That's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be willing to follow the Lord wherever he leads us. It means we're not in charge. And for some of us, not being in charge is, is kind of intimidating. I like being in charge whether it's who's got the remote control of the TV at my house, whether who's driving the car, whether who's telling me where I can go and when I can go and all that kind of stuff. I like being the one making those decisions, right? A lot of us do. We don't like letting someone else tell us what to do. But to show true wisdom from above, we, are, we should be willing to follow the Lord. He is in charge. He's the Lord. It's not us. And that's true wisdom. We're open to reason. We're willing to be led. We are teachable. That's what meekness really means there. Next one is full of mercy. If we say we're wise and to model wisdom, we're to be full of of mercy. It's one of the um, very famous parables of Jesus, Matthew chapter 18. Listen as I read from verse, beginning of verse 23, talking about merciful and being merciful to others as we have received mercy. It says, Therefore, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. But when that same servant went out and he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii and seizing him, he began to choke him saying, pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. He refused and went and had him put in prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. And should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in anger his master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. If you've been forgiven by the Lord, you've been forgiven of a whole bunch. And he asked us to be merciful to others as he was merciful to us. That means we've all had that example firsthand in our lives. God forgave me a whole bunch. I can forgive someone else just a little. That is a sign of wisdom. If sometimes we think it's a sign of strength. And I'll show them how tough I am by holding on to that. I'm not ever going to forget. I'm always going to remind them. It's actually opposite from heavenly wisdom. Heavenly wisdom is to have mercy, just as it was demonstrated to us. It says it is full of mercy. And this is wisdom from above. It's full of mercy and good fruits. What does that mean? It means if we are showing the meekness, the humility of Christ in our life. If we're being wise in the way that we live, it's going to show up in, in the way we live. And, and those fruits are summarized and are listed in Galatians chapter 5, again, verse 22, where it says, But the fruit of the Spirit, and it was that that bears, that comes out of us, that, uh, that we demonstrate, that we show, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control if we are truly wise if we are truly meek and humble following the lord if we're a, a truly wise person those things are going to show right 
love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. All those things are just going to come out of us. When people see us, describe us, that's what they should see. That's a loving person. That is a peaceful person. That's a joyful person. That's a patient person. That's a kind, good, faithful, gentle, controlled person. That is fruits that should be born. Next is impartial. We're truly showing the wisdom of the Lord. We're going to be impartial. James spent a whole lot in chapter 2 talking about that. How do we treat somebody that we see based on how much money they have? Do we treat somebody rich better than we treat someone who's poor? Do we make these judgments against someone just based on outward appearances? Do we treat someone better because they could help us more than someone over here could help us? But here, true wisdom means that we're impartial. God loves us all. God's been merciful to us all. We should show that mercy, that love to everyone, regardless. The richest person or the poorest person, we should treat them the same. The last word that describes our wisdom from above, if we are truly modeling godly wisdom, if we're living out our faith the way we're supposed to, we should be sincere. The older I get, I have to admit that's one of the things I, I can I notice about other people sometimes, especially other Christians when I see when I go, that's the real deal right there. That person is the real deal. And isn't that great to see somebody who is the real deal when times get tough or the real deal when it's not easy to be, the real deal when they're going through tough times themselves, the real deal when they're having to live in tough times, whatever they're going through, and you say, whoa, it would have been so easy to do something else right there, and they were sincere. They showed their sincerity. What does Scripture say about this? One, about our sincerity. We should always be sincere. What we say we should be Matthew 5, uh, 37. A great verse. Of very, if you want to remember one verse that's easy to remember this week, remember this. Let what you say be simply yes or no. Anything that, other than this comes from the devil. Or as a believer, when we say yes, people ought to know we mean yes. When we say no, they ought to mean no. So when our words, we ought to be sincere. People ought to be able to see we really mean what we say. But also the way we act, and James covered this also. In the first chapter, in verse 27, he says, Religion that is pure and undefiled before, the God, before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. If we want to be sincere, we want to live out a sincere faith, how do we take care of those who need some help? How do we take care of someone who, um, who may not can take care of themselves at that time without a little bit of help? How do we treat people... You know, who really need it and who may not can help us in return. How do we treat them? It is sincere. Sincerity in the Christian faith means we're that way all the time. Sincerity means they don't have to guess who we are that day. You know, I mean, we are a follower of the Lord, and they can see that. Again, read those one more time. This may be the tenth time I've read them, but that's okay. We need to get this in our heads tonight. What is a wisdom? What is wisdom from above? It's first pure, doing what God says. It's peaceable, making peace, encouraging peace, spreading the peace of Christ. It's gentle, willing to be led, open to reason, willing to admit that we're wrong sometimes, that we don't have to be right, that we're willing to follow the Lord. We're full of mercy to other people just as God has shown mercy to us. Full of good fruits, that stuff is just going to come out of us if we are sincerely following the Lord in wisdom. People are going to notice it's impartial. We treat everyone like we want to be treated, and it is sincere, not made up, not phony, but truism is sincere when it's not easy to be. Verse 18, and a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. How does this affect our life? What do we do? Let's be consistent with what James teaches. Live like we say we believe. Live like the word teaches. Be wise, not relying on earthly wisdom. It's not book sense. It's those things describe wisdom. Following the Lord completely. Trust in him. Being obedient to him in all things. Doesn't the world need some of that? The world needs right now more than ever. Start with our home families. Need wisdom that comes from above. Let's pray.
Father, we thank you for your word that teaches us. Father, we thank you that we can know you through your son. Father, we thank you that we can uh, have wisdom. Father, that you bless us with that. Father, help us all to be more wise in the way we follow you. Father, the way we treat others. Father, just for that to show in all these things we studied tonight. Father, help us. Father, help us be able to speak up and explain where that wisdom comes from. Father, to point others to you. Father, to bring peace. Help others have peace in their lives through you by sharing, Father, the gospel with them. Father, help us to be aware tomorrow. And just from now on, Father, to be aware of conversations that we can have with people, of, of times to share the gospel with them. Father, help us to have our eyes open for ways to point people to the wisdom that is true wisdom through knowing you. In your son's name we pray. Amen.